For more on Syria's refugee crisis, I'm joined by Theodore Katouf. He is a former U.S. ambassador to Syria, the president of Ahmed East. That's a Washington nonprofit focused on education and training in the Middle East and North Africa. I mean, you're someone who has a great deal of knowledge about the region. What's your take on what's happening with Lebanon and, and some of these other countries kind of, mm, I'm not sure we want this influx of refugees. Right. Well, you know, come March, we're a pr we reached the fourth the end of the fourth year of the beginning of the uprisings in Syria. So we're going to literally start the fifth year uh, very shortly here. More than half of Syria's people, 23 million people, more than half are refugees or displaced. And as you indicated, over 3 million of them have taken refuge in Lebanon, Jordan, and Turkey. Uh, as as the, your correspondent said, Four and a half million people in Lebanon. Keep in mind that a half a million of those are Palestinian refugees who came in 48 and 67. Now they're joined by a million and a half Syrians. The infrastructure is overwhelmed. Rents are going sky high and wages are going down for the uh, lower classes because Syrian laborers are competing uh, with Lebanese labor. Yeah, I saw, uh, I think it was the Wall Street Journal had one of the headlines, it's a race to the bottom, everybody competing for those low-end right. jobs. I was in Beirut probably a year after the, the war started, and I, I talked to people there who were very concerned about this, and they were concerned, and I think they had a better understanding of what this war is like, the complexities of it. Having gone through a civil war there and how long it went, they knew that this thing could drag on for a long time. They knew it could impact them. They were concerned about these things. And it's all kind of come to fruition. What do you see in terms of, I mean, we're talking about competing for jobs, uh, you know, the, the rents going up. Undoubtedly, this is happening in other countries as well. When does it get to the point where the doors just shut and please go somewhere else? Well, we're starting to see it. Jordan uh, has about uh, 600,000 registered refugees, probably a lot more Syrians than that. They've got very tough. Now you find only older men or women and children being allowed in. Uh, some, obviously, there are smuggling routes, and some people find their way in and don't register and the like. And now Lebanon um, has indicated they're not going to necessarily force anybody out, but basically they don't want Syrians coming in uh, except those who are uh, in extreme need or, even better, those who can uh, pay the rent those who can come and actually buy products on the local market. We've got a crisis, there's no doubt about it, and, it, and this war doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. If you were to look into your crystal ball and, and take us a year out, what do we see? Well, what we're seeing already is that the international donor community has fatigue. The UN has said, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees is starting a fundraising drive for $8.4 billion uh, for these refugees. Part of the money to be used to help support the infrastructure uh, in the countries that have taken on these refugees. Uh, but the, the international community is not meeting these goals, not even coming anywhere close. The U.S. is doing its part. Uh, I'm not saying others aren't. The Scandinavians are always good about these sorts of things. But the fact of the matter is, is that the region is being overwhelmed. Turkey is the one country with a population of uh, over 60 million that seems to be able to absorb these people. And indeed, Erdogan, the president, uh, has uh, now give, said these people are, are going to be given ID cards, being allowed public health, public education. Uh, and it's expected soon that they may have uh, the ability to also legally find jobs on the economy, although that's not popular at all in Turkey. You were the ambassador there in Syria. Uh, what does it do to you to see what's going on? Uh, I mean, it's, it just continues to spiral downward, doesn't it? Yeah, I, you, I, I can't even imagine it. I mean, it's, I've been in Lebanon recently, but it's been several years since I've been in Syria. But uh, I never, you know, we knew uh, even 10, 11 years ago that if Syria became destabilized, it could get ugly. But no one that I know of imagined this amount of carnage and suffering and displacement. And during the commercial break, you said there are no easy solutions. And so that's where we're going to have to leave it. Ambassador, thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you.